ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah and as such we should praise him seek his help and seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever Allah has guided none can misguide and whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray none can guide and I bear witness that there's no god worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Inna asdaq al-hadithi kitabullah. Indeed, the most truthful form of speech is the book of Allah. Wa khayru hadi, hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the best source of guidance was the guidance which was brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ For every innovation in religion is a cursed innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every cursed innovation is a source of misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, today, continuing with a topic we began many Jumas ago, looking at the moral foundations behind the pillars of Islam and Iman. We have already covered the pillars of Islam, and a few weeks ago we began to cover the pillars of Iman. We looked at the pillar of belief in Allah and the moral characteristics which it should engender in our lives. And we looked at belief in the angels, something we don't think about too often but something which needs to be thought about because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the second pillar of faith. This week we will be looking at the belief in the books. Belief in the books of revelation which Allah revealed to humankind. Belief in the books begins with a basic concept, a concept which is very important in our times because of the fact that so many people, especially in the sources of globalization, so many people there who nominally consider themselves to be Christians and others who nominally say I believe in God but who practically deny religion who say yes I believe in God but I don't believe in organized religion so what do I do I pick and choose from what I like, what I've read, what I've heard, and I make up my own religion, you know, based on what I feel is appropriate, what I feel makes sense, etc. And I live my life accordingly. And that is seen as being okay. Everybody finds his or her own way. However, that concept as attractive as it might seem 
actually is a, an affront to Allah. It is an affront to God. It is in fact saying that God was not wise. He didn't reveal to his creatures the way of life that he wanted from them. Islam. Religion. He didn't reveal it. Religion is made up by people. And that concept, as I said, attacks a very basic principle of belief in God. That he is all wise. He is Al-Hakim. Ahsan Al-Hakimin. He describes himself as wise in so many different ways in the Quran. And he stresses the importance of wisdom. And all human beings recognize the importance of wisdom. We pride ourselves in being wise. We look down at those who are not wise. So, if we consider that Allah created this world and then did not inform people what he required of them, we would have to say that wasn't a very wise God. Because in our day-to-day -day lives, we can see the results. Confusion, chaos. If information is not given concerning purpose, the way, if it's not made clear, as an owner of a factory, one puts an advertisement in the newspaper for workers for the factory. And then when the workers come, we don't tell the workers what they're supposed to do in the factory. So what do we think is going to happen to that factory? Workers are just going to go in and find their spot and, you know, get in line and do what they're supposed to do? No. They will go to the canteen, drink tea and chat. Till somebody comes and tells them, hey, no, you should be behind that machine and you should be doing this and you should be doing that and come in at this time and leave at that time. And A factory owner who would do that, we say, is foolish. He's foolish. Similarly, if we didn't tell children what they're supposed to do at school, we just sent them. We just, one day they reach a certain age, we just drop them off at school. And each child has to figure out for himself what he has to do at school. What do you think? Think he's going to just go marching into the classroom, sit down and wait for the teacher? Or is he going to go to the playground, to the play yard, swing on the swings and slide on the slides and enjoy? We would have to say, that parent, that school system wasn't very wise. Wisdom requires that People are given information with regards to what they should do under the different circumstances that they find themselves in. That is wisdom. Other than that is a lack of wisdom. Foolishness. So when one says that God created this world and left it to run on its own, that's what that person is actually saying. He's saying... God wasn't very wise. So, that belief, and as I said, it's important to understand that that belief is a popular and common belief now, today. The average Christian, because of what he has seen and heard about Christianity, the Catholic priests, you know, the uh, Da Vinci Code, and you know, all this other foolishness that is out there, they've seen enough things, they read enough, they know that Christianity is fabricated by human beings. Clear. They all, the Bible they have is changing from year to year, decade to decade, new version, latest version, new international standard, and all these other different versions. Any thinking person has to say, hey, this is people making this religion. So, his or her conclusion is, 
all religion is like that of course when they look at Buddhism or look at Hinduism and what's happening there it's clear so they judge all religion in that way and they don't consider looking at Islam thinking that it's no different from the others based on what information comes to them in the media or whatever so this is the common belief today in the countries where the mass of people claim to believe in God that is the common belief and we find that belief actually echoed even among some Muslims Muslims who have been exposed to Western education in one way or form having studied in America UK Europe etc being bombarded by uh, the ideas these kinds of ideas raising doubts in their own minds about Islam but that is part of the consequence of globalization what people always talk about globalization globalization of what globalization of a civilization that has lost its roots that has lost its foundation its moorings it is just at sea adrift no rudder to guide it because once one cuts off the foundation of revelation and when a society says we are secular that's basically what you're saying secular democratic society says we are cutting off our roots to revelation we can decide for ourselves what is best for ourselves once a civilization takes that route then they go astray that is the natural consequence and we see it we live it today from the Islamic perspective Allah from the time that he created Adam and Eve he gave them the way of life that they were to live the religion and we believe that that religion was the religion of Islam nobody can argue that the religion could possibly have been Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism or any of the other isms nobody could really argue that point because none of these founders were around at the time of Adam but the very fact that Allah commanded Adam not to eat from the tree to eat from all of the other trees but not to eat from that particular tree what was required of Adam was submission submission to the will of Allah and that is the definition of Islam so Allah sent books of revelation for human beings from his mercy because he already placed in every human being an awareness and a consciousness of himself as Allah explained in the seventh chapter of the Quran that when he took from Adam all of his descendants at the time of the creation of Adam on the spiritual plane he took out all descendants all human beings who would ever exist in this world as spirits were all created before we came into this world and he asked all of this mass of spirits spirits that would be in human beings over the generations he asked them Allah to be Rabbikum am I not your Lord and all of the spirits bore witness Bala shahidna indeed we bear witness <coughs> and Allah said that he did that so that no one would say later on we didn't know anything about this we didn't know anything about belief in God we could blame our grandparents and our parents it's their fault it's not our fault why we don't believe 
So, this consciousness of God is placed in every human being's soul when he comes into this world. And that's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said, Kullu mauludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Every child is born in a natural state of belief in Allah. That's how all children are born. Or we say every child is born Muslim. Submitting to Allah. That is the natural state. But it is his parents who divert him to Judaism, to Christianity, to uh, Zoroastrianism, etc. But had he been left on his own, he would have worshipped Allah alone. Naturally. So, every human being has that core of faith. And technically speaking, that should have been sufficient to guide him or her in this life. However, from the grace of Allah, where He bestows on us blessings which we don't particularly have a right to, this is the grace of Allah. He has given us what we haven't earned. He gives us books of revelation. Which would outline for people the way of life, Islam, and how it should be implemented in their lives. So belief in Allah Belief in his books requires that we believe that Allah revealed scriptures to the various nations of the world. His word, his message came to us in revealed texts. Some of them are mentioned in the Quran and of course we have to believe in those that are mentioned in the Quran. The Psalms, the Gospels, the Torah, what was given to Prophet Abraham, books given to Prophet Abraham, also Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned books given to Prophet Adam. Messages were given as revelation and we believe in all of them. However, we at the same time recognize that those books of revelation have not remained in their original form. Please come in and close the door, please. Close the door. These books of revelation have not remained in their original condition. So, these books, while being given to the prophets, while being revealed for humankind, these books revealed to the prophets contained the basic message of Islam, which is to worship Allah alone and not to worship others besides or along with him. Worship of Allah alone. Part of belief in the books is belief that the final book, the Quran, is the only book which has remained in its original form. And this belief is not one based on prejudice. We as Muslims want to say our book is the original one. Pure. The word of God. But that's what the Christians say, that's what the Jews say, that's what others say. What makes what we say any different from what they say? Well, scientific 
academic research establishes without a shadow of a doubt that the Torah, the Gospels, have been changed. They are not original scriptures. Whereas the Quran put under the same meticulous study where manuscripts were gathered from all over the Muslim world from the museums of Europe and America and compared after all of this comparison it was concluded that the Quran has not changed it is the same Quran that Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him taught his followers about whether it was revealed or not that's another issue we believe it was revealed but Western scientific research in this matter establishes that the Quran has remained for 1,400 years unchanged. So part of our belief in the books is belief that the Quran has not changed. It is the only book of revelation that has remained pure, untouched, without any additions or deletions from the time of its revelation until today. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say that asking Allah's forgiveness for myself and for yourselves, calling on you to turn to Allah and ask His forgiveness, for indeed no one forgives sins but Him. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. What then is the character, the moral principle that we should extract from belief in the revealed books? First and foremost, the most primary moral principle is that of gratitude. That of gratitude. That we be thankful to Allah, thankful to Allah for the books of revelation. Because as we said, it is from the grace of Allah. It is not what we deserved. But from His mercy and His grace, He gave us books of revelation. So first and foremost, we should be thankful to Allah. And you find this concept of thankfulness stressed throughout the teachings of Islam. The very Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran, which we recite at least 17 times a day, Begins with what? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All thanks, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. That whenever we turn to Allah, we should turn to Him beginning with gratitude for what He has given us. Always let that be first. Being thankful. Because when we lose sight of that, then we become uh, ungrateful. We become desirous of things that really we shouldn't be focusing on. We start to blame others. We start to blame Allah. We start to... It leads to a very uh, weak character who in himself or herself cannot recognize 
the good in their lives. The good which exists in our lives, we cannot appreciate. So all we can see is negative, bad, evil. Why? So you even find people saying, well, why did God even create me in the first place? Reality is that thankfulness, gratitude is a fundamental characteristic which each and every believer must have as a basic primary characteristic of their own individual character. It's primary. Its balance is patience. We have gratitude and patience. These scholars of the past used to refer to as the two wings of the faith. Making faith like a bird which has two wings. If you lose one of the wings, then you can't fly. Gratitude and patience. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi summed it up in a hadith narrated by Suhaib ibn Sinan, in which he said, The affair of the believer is amazing, the whole of his life is beneficial. And that is only in the case of the believer. When good kind comes to him, he is thankful, and it is good for him. Allah rewards him for it. And when bad times befall him, he is patient, and it's also good for him. Allah rewards him for it. This is the win-win situation that is spoken of. Both times, because our lives is either between success or failure good or bad what we want and what we don't want that is the nature of our lives so what's required of us when what we desire comes gratitude thankfulness to Allah not becoming so overwhelmed with our happiness that we forget Allah and we abuse the gifts which he has given us and at the same time, when trials come, when difficulty comes, we are patient. Knowing that whatever trials we face are what Allah has prescribed for us and for our faith. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us guidance in this regard to help us to develop this quality saying, look to those less fortunate than you. And not to those above you. It is our nature to look to those above us. So and so has a good this, he has a good that, has a nice car, he has a nice home, he has a nice this, he has a nice that. And we look to him. And when you look to him, what, do you, what happens? Then what you have isn't so nice anymore. Looking to those above you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't look to those above you. Look to those less fortunate than you. Because no matter how bad your situation is, there is a world less fortunate than you. And you will be thankful then. When you look to those less fortunate, then you will be thankful. Alhamdulillah. Prophet Muhammad also said, Man lam yashkurid nas, lam yashkurillah. Whoever doesn't thank people, doesn't thank Allah. So alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah, when we say that and we don't thank people, then the thanking of Allah becomes meaningless. Allah doesn't accept it. Because what Allah gives us comes through people. Though we recognize that it ultimately comes from Allah, it's still Allah has destined that it comes through people. So therefore, 
we should thank those people through whom it came. Not because Allah needs for us to thank them, but because they need to be thanked to encourage them to do more good. Because when you do something good for people and they don't thank you, what do you think? That's a thankless person, ungrateful. I don't think I'll do anything more for that person. We as human beings don't have the ability to keep on doing good when people don't show good in return, don't show thanks, don't show appreciation. This is our nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who does good even though we don't appreciate, even though we even deny His existence, He still does good. That is Allah. Human beings are not that way. So Allah made thanking people an obligation. And at the same time, this thanks, giving thanks to Allah, is the distinction between paradise and hell. It is the distinction between paradise and hell. People often ask, what about so and so? They didn't believe in God, but they were good people. They were good people. They lived good lives. They did good things. What about these people? Do they deserve to be in hell forever? <coughs> Simply because of that small issue, they didn't believe in God. A belief. Hell forever. But in life they did so many good things. We say to them, what about a child who is raised by his or her mother? She does everything for that child. Sacrifices, giving birth to, staying awake at night, suffering all for that child and then the child grows up rejects his mother doesn't want to have anything to do with her but he is kind to his neighbors kind to everybody else he does for them he helps them he's always there for them but his mother he yeah, doesn't have to have anything to do with what do we say about such a child we say that that child is truly ungrateful. The value of his kindness to others, when he is not kind to the most primary source of goodness in his life, we say it's misled, it's misguided, he's astray. And Allah is much more kind than that mother. So, in the same way the good that those do who don't believe in Allah who have rejected Allah etc Allah in his mercy rewards them for it in this life but there is nothing for them in the life to come and this is the guidance which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, pointed us to gratitude in our lives we ask Allah to make us among those who are grateful who are conscious of the blessings of Allah in our lives. That we ask peace and blessings for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in gratitude for the efforts that he made to bring this way of life to us in our generation. We ask Allah to make gratitude real in our lives, in our practical lives, not only on our lips, but that we show true gratitude to him by sharing what we have with those around us. We ask Allah to make our faith real. We ask Allah to allow us to leave this world 
on that true faith. Amen.